<laughs> uh, good morning. Uh, I think second service is getting the overflow of uh, first service because it was really good this morning. Um, hmm. Well, I like I told first service, I was supposed to preach at the beginning of the month, and um, I, I went out to lunch with Leona and got really sick. It wasn't Leona. <laughs> I don't think I'll be eating Chinese for a while, but um, I got really sick. And we had the ladies breakfast and I said, I'm just gonna go, because that was Thursday and Saturday morning, this has gotta go, this has gotta go. And I sat through the breakfast and was like, this is not going anywhere. <laughs> and so I had to call Pastor Tim at two and said, I, this is not working. And um, but God knew because I had two parts of a message and I couldn't figure out how to get it all in 35 minutes and put it together. And what has been happening over the last three weeks has been one of the parts of the message that have been on my heart to share with you. Then he's been preaching them. And so I just get to bring you the other part of the message. And, um, and then all three of my kids came down with strep. I was like, Lord, I've got it. I got it. I'm not preaching this Sunday. I got it. We don't need any more sickness. We're good. We're good. I'm covered for a while. So <laughs> it's like every two days, one of them came down with strep. So here we are. And God is good. Amen. Is it good? Um, this morning, first of all, where's Tony? Tony. Um, the Lord wants you to know that you are a vessel fit for honor. That you are, um, as I see you as a vessel with a bunch of holes in it, but those holes are good. And you might see them as weaknesses, but the Lord wants you to know that those holes are there on purpose because you just leak the Holy Spirit. Amen. He's using those places of weakness to ooze out to other people that you are overflowing, and he is so pleased with you. He, when he looks in a crowd, he stops where you are because he knows you. He knows you, and he's very pleased with you. So don't despise the holes. <laughs> They're there for a reason. And let God continue to, to ooze out of you through those holes. And Pastor Thomas and Katie, the Lord wants to say thank you. Um, you know that old Ray Bolt song, thank you for giving to the Lord? But I really felt that that was true this morning, that the Lord wanted to say thank you, that he is pleased with you, that you gave and you served, and there is a long line of people that are in heaven because you did what the Lord asked you to do, because you sacrificed, and at many times it cost you, it cost you friendships and money and all kinds of things, but the Lord said he is pouring it all back in. And he wants to say thank you. Thank you. Well done. Well done. And Randy, this morning, um, I'm going to be talking about the names of God. And the Lord wants you to know that he has been Jehovah Rapha to you, the healer. God the healer. And that he's been very pleased to walk through this season with you. And it's been a time where he has gotten deeper in your heart and he's so pleased to be there he is um, sitting with you walking with you talking with you speaking to you and he is loving every minute of it so it's been a rough journey but god is with you he's not leaving you and he is healing you physically and other stuff that you've asked the lord to take care of he's going to answer those things so keep walking with him. Keep walking with him. We'll come back. <laughs> this morning, um, what I really feel is the Lord wants us to know who he is. It's been no mistake that we've been walking and talking about faith. He wants to take the church to a new level. It's not, um, I said this morning, it's not a level up here. It's deeper. It's a level way down, way down deep. And one way that he wants to do that is revealing who he is. Because in the Old Testament, names were very important. 
you were known by your name. So if you weren't liked and you got one of those bad names, darn it. <laughs> like I said, I wouldn't want to be known as supplanter, the thief. Hi, I'm, I'm the thief. <laughs> Let me in your house. No, okay? Because every rock, every place, places were named by what happened there, whether it was blessing or cursing. Things meant bitter. Things, you know, and God changed people's names. Abram to Abraham. Okay? Saul to Paul. Their reason, because that's who they were. It was important. It was very important, a name. And it's no different with God. With our God. He is so big and so vast that one name does not cover it. His name is revealed, his character is revealed to us in his names. Jehovah Rapha, the healer. Jehovah Nisi, the banner. A banner. When they would go out to battle, they'd have a flag that had their seal, their emblem. So you knew who you were being conquered by. But God, one of his names, Jehovah Nisi, he is able to conquer any foe. Amen. Any foe. Amen. Like we said, cancer. There are people dealing with cancer. He is able to conquer that foe. It's not bigger than him. Depression. Discouragement. Hope deferred. Do you have hope deferred? God can conquer that. Amen. Do you have something from your past that's weighing you down? God is bigger than that thing. Amen. Your past is gone. He's the redeemer. We sang about redeeming love. Redeeming love. We can sing about it, but gosh, wow. Do you know what his redeeming love is? He loved me even though he knew me. In spite of knowing me, he loved me anyway. He redeemed me. Cammy, you have been redeemed. The Redeemer, we've talked about this, has cut off the past. It's not there. That is not who you are. You have been redeemed. You are a woman of God. You are a woman of God who can hold her head up high and walk in the knowledge that your God loves you. Loves you beyond all measure. He is pleased with you. He loves you, Cammy. He loves what you are doing to change your family, to rewrite their history. He's a redeeming God. He is a redeeming God. The old is gone and the new has come. You are a new woman just since I've been here. You are a new woman. God is pleased with you. Gosh, <laughs> could go on forever. Some of you need Jehovah Shalom, our peace. It's not just peace, that oh, I have peace about this decision. No, it's a deep, deep peace. It means that you are right with God, that those things that have happened to you don't come between you and God. Those things that you have done don't come between you and God. You have right relationship with him that you can boldly go into the throne of grace with your head held high with reverence with a fear of the Lord a respect of him but you don't have to fear him he is not to be feared he is a friend he is on your side waving his banner over you saying this is my beloved who belongs to me who belongs to me you don't have to have those things weighing you down. Jesus is our hope. He's a strong tower, a refuge, a place where we can run into. Are things going crazy in your life? Run into him. He's the refuge. He's a strong tower. He's not a tower that you're going to have to worry is going to crumble around you. He's a strong tower. He's a safe place that you can run into and bury yourself in him. And you know what's in there? healing, hope, love. Oh, do you need love? Do you need to be loved? Run into him. Go deep with him. Be in him. He'll tell you who you are because you have an enemy that's standing at the door ready to tell you who he thinks you are. 
ready to bring up the past, ready to tell you, no, this is who you are. No, you run into the Lord and you find out who you are in Him, that He loves you. He loves you. I had to talk to one of my girls this week about being who she is in Christ. She felt that her birth mom's blood was in her and she had no other choice but to be just like her. Oh, broke my heart. And I was able to say, but that's not true because you have my blood in you. You have my blood in you and you have Christ's blood in you. You were bought with a price. And the old is gone and the new is come and you are not that. You do not have to live that way. She needed hope. She needed hope that it was not just, I have to be this way. No. And she's changed her whole being. Her whole countenance has changed because she, she encountered the God of hope. The God who knows everything. You need to know, Patty, that God is the God who sees you. He sees where you are. He sees every need. It's not beyond him. He knew everything that you were going to go through, and he sees you. Every one of you need to know that God sees you in your situation. Are you broken? Are you hurt? We have a God who cares. He cares. He doesn't turn a deaf ear. Have you been wounded by the church? Probably. If you've been a Christian for more than a year, you've been wounded by someone in the church. And I'm telling you that God is bigger. God is bigger. God was not those words. Those words that were spoken were not from him. Brush him off. Dust the dust off of your feet and go on. Let him take it. Let him deal with it. Let him be the judge. Let him be the punisher. Walk in healing. Walk in what God has for you. Hmm. Lynn, I really feel that God um, has a new thing for you. Um, you are an encourager, and um, he wants to take you to a new level of that encouragement, a level where um, you're going to see things that you don't really want to see, and you're going to have to um, bring some correction. <laughs> Do you know who Jack Hayford is? Um, there was a story where he reminded me of, uh, <laughs> he was on a plane, he, he pastors, if you don't know, he's one of our big pastors in Foursquare, and he pastors a several thousand member congregation, and he was going from one service in the morning and flying somewhere to speak that evening, so he changed into his clothes, he was going to get right off the plane and he was going to go and, and so he was just getting onto the plane and he was walking down the aisle and this little kid, he had khaki pants on and this little kid um, turned around and was talking to somebody on the other side and had a marker in their hand and marked on his pants and he was like, okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> bless the kid, bless the kid, bless the kid, walked, got to his seat, sat down and was just wanting to just spend some time relaxing getting into his notes or whatever, and he looked to the person next to him, and it had a, this guy had a name on his forehead, said Phoebe. And the Lord was like, ask him who that is. And he was like, no. <laughs> no, thank you. No, thank you. And so the Lord was like, Jack. And so he said to the guy, who's Phoebe? Well, it turned out he, it was a secretary, and he was going on a trip with her, and he was having an affair with her. And the Lord said, so gave him this whole word for it. And so I think you're going to find yourself in some of those situations where the Lord is going to reveal things to you. And sometimes you're going to have to keep quiet about it. 
and mull that over with the Lord. And sometimes you're going to speak that and there's going to bring healing. But um, you're going to be able to love them because you have that mother's heart and you're going to be able to pull them in and just love them in their terrible spots. <laughs> but just be, be ready for that. And let the love of God just ooze out of you and bring healing. Because you know, his, he's a healing salve. He's a healing salve. He's just able to cover everything. To cover it all. My Jesus, my King, my Healer, my Savior, the Lover of my soul. What of God, what name of God ministers to you? Amen. Run into that. There was a time where um, I was pastoring down in California and there was just some things in my life that hurt, that hurt. And I was wounded and I finally said, no more. I'm done. Lord, I'm not leaving here tonight until you take care of this. And I put some worship music on and I stayed there all night. And for the first time, I felt that someone stood up for me. The Lord stood up for me. The enemy was just kind of hammering at me and had been for years. And the Lord said, enough. I'm the victor. And I felt like he just crushed Satan under his feet and said, I'm the victor. No more. Leave her alone. That's enough. And he, oh, I knew him as the one who stood up for me, my defender, the defender and the lifter of my head. He lifted my head and said, you don't have to bear that anymore. You don't have to bear that anymore. I am the lifter of your head. I am the healer of your soul. And he did. He ministered to me all night long. All night long. You're going to face situations in life. Duh. <laughs> That's not news. <laughs> you are going to face things, and we are in the end times. We are, if this isn't the end, well, I don't want to be there at the end. Because it's terrible out there. I've had to have conversations with my children, my 11-year-old, that I never would have had, thought that I would have had to have until she was 16, 17. They are faced with all kinds of things, and we are faced with all kinds of things. And we will not stand if we don't have roots that go deep. Amen. I was reading about the parable of the seeds, the seeds that are scattered out there, and some of them are plucked away right away. Some of them go down and are taken away and dried up and wither. And some of them are choked out by the weeds, choked out by the cares of the world. Are you choked out by the cares of the world? It's easy to do, but the ones that have rich soil, have roots that go deep, go deep. Let your roots go deep. You cannot have faith if you do not know him. I do not have faith in Joe Bubblegum that's walking across the, out on the street. I don't know him. But can I trust Pastor Tim? Yes, because I've known him most of my life. I can say, no, that's not something Tim would say. That's not how Tim would do that, because I know his character. And I know my God, and I know his character, and I can say, that is not my God. That is not my God, but this is my God. Amen. This is my God, because I know him, because I've been in the places that have been difficult, and he has revealed his character to me. And I know him, and I love him. And when the wind comes, when the storms come, my roots are deep. I might get tossed around and have messy hair and look frazzled, but my roots are deep in him. When the hard things come, I told first service, if you want to have a good cry, get this book. It's called Choosing to See. And it is um, Stephen Curtis Chapman. He's a Christian singer. And his wife, Mary Beth Chapman. And they um, had three children, and they adopted three little girls from China. And um, they've always had my heart, because before I adopted, they, I watched their process of adopting these little girls, and just, it gripped me. And um, about five years ago, five years ago, um, their youngest of the adopted children was hit and killed by their son their natural born son in his car. He was driving in the driveway, didn't see them. She was running, excited, wanted him to help her 
um, get up on the monkey bars and he never saw her. In fact, he later said, why was she sleeping in the driveway? Why was she taking a nap in the driveway? He had no idea. Hit her and killed her. And it was his, the one he was the closest to, his buddy. And man, if that doesn't rock your world. You know, they lost their daughter and hoped that they did not lose their son because he was so full of grief. And when they got to the hospital and the doctors had to tell them that she was gone, uh, Mary Beth came out. There was a group of people and she said, it is true. It is all true. Everything about my God that we have told you is still true. It has not changed. My God is my God. And these circumstances, we don't like them. We hate them. They still hate them. They have a hole in their family. But they knew that every one of our days is numbered. They knew that she was never meant to ride a bicycle. She was never meant to have a graduation picture up on their wall. But she came to know him about a month before that. She asked Jesus into her heart. And she left him a note, said, <laughs> I'll see you there. I'll see you there, Mom and Dad. I love you. And they chose to walk through that. This is full of their grief, very raw. In fact, I got it when I was in the middle of <laughs> not knowing whether I would be able to keep Sammy or not, my littlest one. And I had to quit reading it because I couldn't handle the pain. And, but when I got here and she was adopted, I finished reading it and I cried every page because there's so much richness of who their God is to them. And in the name, they, um, her name was already Maria when they got her and she had a Chinese name. And um, they said being the sixth of the children, they didn't think to look up what her Chinese name meant. And about a year and a half after she died, her, um, Stephen Curtis Chapman was doing a new album and the last song on there was um, like Spring River. Everything is melting and spring is coming. And just writing out of what God was doing in them. And their oldest daughter um, was in Belfast and she had a Chinese friend and she asked her, what, what's, this is, was my little sister's name, what does it mean? And she said, oh, it means spring is coming. And she was like, oh my goodness, she called the mom and dad and they didn't know the Chinese character. Well, later they found the Chinese character for it and they showed her and she said, oh, well actually it means more like spring river. <laughs> Did God know? God knew. This little child who was born in a communist country, named by somebody, you know, was given the name Spring River. Yeah, God knew. God knows, even in the hard places, He knows. Those places weren't overlooked. He knew, He saw, He picked them. He picked them to be her mom and dad. He picked them to walk through it. And just so you know, their oldest, their son is, is, God healed him. God is healing him. It hurts, but he goes around and he ministers out of his pain. What God did, because he never let go of who his God was. His roots were deep. They were deep. So what are you facing today that you need God to fix? Because he's here. Right here here. Able, willing, loving to put his name on you. Amen. To place his name. In fact, right now, I place the name of Jesus on you. Jesus. My healer, my redeemer, my friend. I place the name of Jesus on you. Wear it. Let it minister to you. I want to show you a video. There is an old um, Baptist minister, <laughs> African, this was several years ago, African American minister, and he was retiring, correct? And he um, was at a convention and they asked him to give a word to the congregation. And this is what came out. <laughs> you will love it.
about that one. It's the third one. Third one, yeah. yeah. Go one more down, Mike. Press, press the down button. We go. <laughs> it's worth the wait. <laughs> the Bible says my king is the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I wonder, do you know him? My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled, he's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent. And he beautifies the meek. I wonder if you know him. He's the key to knowledge. He's the wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance. He's the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. He's the gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. And his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. Uh, I wish I could describe him to you. Yes, he's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He 
he's irresistible. You can't get him out of your mind. You can't, you can't get him off of your hand. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. Well, the Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. Yeah! That's my king. That's my king. Amen. <laughs> I would say that's somebody who knows their God. Amen. If that's what comes out when you're asked to give a word, I want to be like that. I want to be able to describe him like that. And know him like that. He knows his God. Do you want to know him like that? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that you are a God who is right here with us. We don't have to go seeking you. We don't have to go finding you. You are right here with us. You love us. You love us. You heal us. You take care of us. You guide us. You direct us. You care about us. You are with us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, King. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, lover of my soul. Lord, help us to know you more. <laughs> he loves those prayers. Help us to know you more. Show us even more of what we need to know of you. Lord, for every person in here, I just pray that as they walk out the door, you would give them what they need of you. Whatever it is they need to know more of you about, give it to them. Overflow them Father with it, Lord. Lord. Not just a little, but a Come lot. On, Jesus, do it. A lot. A ton. Amen. Let us each ooze who you are. Lord, that people would go, wow, what is up with you? What is up with you? Who are you? I want to know the king that you know. I want to know your God. That's who we want to be. So, Lord, thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for showing us who you are. Lord, thank you for showing us that you are the only one that we can put our faith in. All these weeks of talking about faith, you're the only one. You're the only one that I can trust. You're the only hope for what I need. And I put my faith in you. Thank you, Lord.